I'm sorry that I cannot be with you today because of my wife Charlene's accident. Fortunately, it is not life-threatening and she is improving. It is a great honor, not only for me, but for my family, the Mayo Clinic, our dysprotonemia group, and the myeloma community to receive the Wallace Coulter Award. It's a tall order to fulfill the instructions of the society. That is, <clears throat> to provide words of inspiration and a glimpse into how you are able to realize your achievements in three minutes. Every patient is different. Every patient can teach the physician. I'll always remember the first patient that I saw with smoldering multiple myeloma. I was asked to see him in consultation, and I had noted that he had been seen a year before <clears throat> with a large serum M spike and 20% plasma cells in his bone marrow. The findings were, si were consistent with multiple myeloma, but he had not been treated. I walked into the room expecting to see a patient who was pale and in pain, but instead found a 73-year-old man smiling and denying any symptoms. His M-spike was stable and he had no anemia or bone lesions. Now, <clears throat> I must confess that I don't know if it was the patient's desire not to be treated or my recognition that he might not require therapy. In any event, I agreed not to treat him if he promised to return in three months. He did and three months later, I found that his condition was stable. The visits lengthened to six months and then became annual for 20 years. He died of congestive heart failure at the age of 93 years without evidence of amyloidosis and he had never been treated. Mr. O taught me a lot. The second point that I want to make is the need to persist. For example, we have the story of Arnie Tesalius from the University of Uppsala in Sweden. He wrote a paper describing the separation of serum proteins with an electric current and then identifying the individual uh, proteins by the refractive index. He submitted his paper to the Biochemical Journal, but it was rejected. He subsequently published it in the Transactions of the Faraday Society, a journal that no longer exists. This paper led to his Nobel Prize. Incidentally, it took one patient, I'm sorry, it took one technician a full day to examine the serum of one patient. Thus, the editor does not always know best. My advice is to submit your rejected manuscript to another journal, but to be sure to read the reviewer's comments and alter the manuscript accordingly. You could get the same reviewer, and he or she may well be annoyed if you have made no effort to improve the paper. In summary, keep your eyes open, keep working, and don't give up. Carry on. Thank you, Ken, and the Society. I'm very grateful to all of you.